Okay, so in this part, um, we're going to do a Nessus scan for part two. So make sure you have your PF sense running. Uh, again, now this is the diagram. Uh, air, all the machines are locked into the local LAN. Air, it's able to access um, PF sense through the firewall to be able to go to the router and out to the internet. So if you haven't got that configured, make sure you get that configured. So, all right, <clears throat> let's go with, let's go with uh, making sure that um, all of the, the Windows server, it's on the uh, internal network that you created. We can pop that open on uh, the Elk stack. Go and check that setting. Make sure it's in the local, nothing on adapter two, just adapter one. You can go ahead and get that started. Your uh, Linux server, um, check the setting there. Make sure that it's on your local uh, internal network. We're good. Get that one started. Uh, your Kali Linux. Make sure that it's also on your internal network, on uh, LAN 1. Adapter 2, nothing, so just one, so we're good there. And the last is your Ubuntu. Just make sure that it's on the internal network. Okay. Good. Get that one started too. So get all your uh, virtual machine started. Log on in. And Remember, we install um, Kali Linux, install Nessus on Kali Linux. So, so make sure when we get to our Kali Linux, that that's where we're gonna run the Nessus scan. Just want to make sure we got everything all up and running. Linux server is running. Uh, it's going to be running. And we're missing our Kali Linux. Make sure we have that right here. Okay, that's up and running. That's our main one for scanning this whole network. You guys also make sure uh, this is my setting for my uh, computer. But if you have all these machines running, I'm going to use every bit of memory I have um, to run all these machines. So make sure you have the hardware capable of running everything. Okay, so Kelly is going to be up here shortly. Uh, and all these, we can get the IP address. Uh, on the Windows server, we're going to open command prompt. And we're going to type IP config get the IP address on this Linux. I was going to type IP space A, get that IP address there. Log into your Linux server. And open up the Ubuntu Elk stack here. We're also going to run IPA, get the IP address, make sure they all are different IP address. Uh, make sure you remember your username and passwords.
this actually is org. Okay. And I'm just gonna do IPA. It has not got an IP address yet. So we need to do sudo dh client um, to get a new IP address. We don't need to do a dash r because it doesn't have one. So we just need to get one. And then we'll do IPA again. And there you go. Now this one we have. So it's uh, okay. I'm just open a notepad here. All right, so here's the Windows server, and that IP address is 10.0.3.12. I don't know if I can make this bigger. Let me see here. Zoom in. Okay. And then our Ubuntu, it is 10.0.3.10. And our Linux server is 10.0.3.15. And our Elk staff, Ubuntu, L stack is 10.0.3.14. And then our Kali machine here. Let's see if we get a IP address for this. The terminal. IPA. And it's 13. And you kind of minimize this. And the Kali is at 10.0.3.13. So you, all these have different IP address 12, 10, 15, 14, and 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 machines. And remember, our Kali machine is where uh, we had host um, install the Nessus. So we're going to go up here. And we're going to do 10.0. We, we can, um since I fixed the firewall already, I can enable, go to the 10.0.2. And we're just going to check to make sure that all the IP, um, the HTTP IP address are listed. And we got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, up and running, so 15, 13, 10, 14, 12, and 17. So, one, two, three, four. One of these is probably from earlier. So, okay, so that's up and running. Okay, so on the tab, we're going to go this IP address 10.0.2.3.14. And then we're going to go port 8.8.4. So it's the IP address plus the port. Uh, we also need to start Nessus first. So, sys sudo systemctl start Nessus service. Okay, and then we're gonna just also do a status. 
to make sure that it's up and running. So it's active. So we are good there. Now go back to the web browser here. And I'll try that IP address again. Can also do local host at 8834. Okay, so we're gonna open a new tab. Uh, we got all the computer up and running. You gotta do HTTPS colon four slash. Uh, this IP address was 10.0.3.13 and port number at 8834. And then you should get this. Uh, let's just maximize this. And you wanna go to advance. Accept and continue. We get to our Nessus login, and I think my password was admin or my username was admin. Okay, so here's a two scan that we did on an earlier video um, that we didn't complete, but we're going to start a new scan. And we're going to do uh, that scan. So, and now uh, we're going to do a basic uh, network scan. And this is going to be uh, internal IPs. We can put it in there. Uh, the target was 10.0.0. 3.1 slash 24. So this can scans all the network. Um, now go schedule, discovery, ports, common ports, uh, assessments, report, anything in advance, any credentials that you want to put in. Uh, I'm not going to put anything, any kind of plugins. Uh, no plugins. So go back to basic. So it's uh, internal IPs, the whole network of that 0.301. Save that, which is this internal IP. Internal IP. We're gonna run the scan. We're gonna run the scan. Done. And when the scan is we'll done, take a look uh, we'll come back and take a look at it. Okay, so in this part, we're going to go back to the IP. Uh, we're going to be looking at the different IP address that we're scanning. Uh, as you can see that uh, these are the IP address uh, relates to the scan that's currently running. And the vulnerability that shows is on the Kali Linux. Uh, the third, uh, 10 that 10.0.3.1 is actually the gateway. So all the other virtual machines will flow through uh, the gateway to get internet access. So as you can see that the Ubuntu is 10.0.3.10 uh, and the Dot three dot two is the Windows server. And the Ubuntu Elk stack is three dot fourteen. Uh, the system is still scanning. Uh, you can sort by the ratings or you can also check the history of the scan. And you can scroll down to look at all the different vulnerabilities that are there. Uh, you can look into each vulnerability. It's going to get a description of what it is and what it does.
and where it found its output from uh, during the scan and how to remediate the issue. And you can see which PC that it came from. Now going back to vulnerabilities. Uh, here's the host. Uh, you can see it's rated high for one and we click into it. And to see where it's at, it's actually in one of those folders. So now I'm just um, searching around and the system is still scanning this uh, for vulnerabilities across the five machines that we uh, have open. And now the vulnerability has finished scanning and it took about 20 minutes for the scan. So if we go under the uh, remediation, it shows what we can do to uh, prevent the scan. Uh, it's currently looking at the vulnerability OpenJDK. Uh, there's nine vulnerabilities in there. OpenJDK is Open Java Development Kit. Uh, just need to upgrade to a newer version that's not in between 8, 11, 17, or 20. You can copy that to do a search for it. And at the end, I added vulnerabilities just to kind of narrow it down. Uh, click open to it. This is from Nessus. Uh, this is the description that's also within the vulnerability when you click on it. Uh, in this case, it gives description of how the vulnerability is used, how it's exploited, and how to remediate it. Uh, this is also the same um, on the vulnerability. So if you click the folder that has the open JDK, which is, well, I'll click here shortly. Uh, there's three counts of it. And then this is where the high and the medium are. On uh, this case, it's looking for op OpenJDK 8. Uh, and it says anything less than 8U362, uh, 11 or less, uh, up until 20. Uh, those are the vulnerabilities that I found. And this is the same description as doing a search for it. In this case, the support versions are affected, are Oracle, Java, and the versions that are included. And right there, it will say, difficult to exploit vulnerability allows unauthenticated attack with network access using TLS compromise, Oracle, Java, so forth. So they can access your system uh, but the solution is to update it to the greater version than those 8U362, 11, uh, 17, or 20 will solve the issue. And this is where the output was found. Uh, it's in the user lib, uh, lib JVM Java. Uh, it's still finding Java 11 and it just says upgrade to the, upgrade to a newer version. And at the bottom is actually the host of Kali Linux. Um, if we look here shortly, uh, remember our IP address is 10.0.3.13, which is the Kali Linux. Uh, 
uh, going back to looking at the overall vulnerabilities, the other two states the same thing. Uh, just need to upgrade to a better version or a newer version. Currently, our version is 11.0.16. And I'm just uh, surfing around to see uh, what other vulnerability is there. Uh, the remediation, it consists of trying to uh, upgrade it. Uh, there's the vulnerability for the Kali system. So in this case, we're going to go to the terminal and we're going to clear the screen. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you guys can see. If you type in Java dash dash version, it will give you the latest, the, uh, the version installed, which is the 11.0.16. And in this case, I was trying to search up the package for uh, OpenJDK. Uh, search function didn't work there. I actually need to use app dash cache and then search OpenJDK. And what this does is this is everything that's out there that you can upgrade to. Um, as you can see, it says open JDK 11. There's a DPG, a demo, a doc, and a JDK. Those three, four different files. We need to just update the JDK. Uh, there's version 11, 17, 21, and 22. In this case, um, I'm going to go down the bottom and we're going to install JDK-22. So to install, this is where I'm choosing to do the newest version, which is the OpenJDK-22. Uh, and to install, I'm going to do app-git uh, install openjdk-22. And dash, uh, we're going to go with a JDK. Uh, in this case, this is permission deny. We need to use sudo command because we're escalating the privilege. Uh, go ahead and I'm going to type in my password. It's going to install. It says, do you really want to overwrite it? And I'll say yes. And then the system is going to go out to the web and download the package that it needs to update it to OpenJDK 22. It's going to ask to restart uh, your Java libraries. Uh, just make sure that when you're doing this, it doesn't affect anything in your environment. If one of your other system needs the older Java because it was written that way, uh, make sure you check it uh, and do any change management that you need to. So while this is getting installed and updating uh, here it completed the update and we're going to check the java version and now the java version is jdk 22 and we're going to go back to the scan and here we're going to wouldn't want to run a new, uh, we'll run a new scan and this is just specifically for the Kali Linux. Uh, I put Kali JDK update 22. Uh, the IP address was 10.0.3.13. Uh, um, this is where I'm going to check the IP address, make sure it's the same. 
10.0.3.13. Gonna go ahead and save it. Uh, then we're gonna run this. Uh, and it's gonna go back and scan this specific system only because that's the IP address for it. And as it's running, it's already pulling some vulnerability that it's finding. But it's gonna take about a good seven, eight minutes to scan this system. This here is just going over the high vulnerabilities again. Uh, system still running. This here, I'm just rechecking the Java version. Uh, hopefully by updating it, the vulnerability will uh, no longer be in the scan. Uh, this case, uh, we rebooted Kali Linux. Hopefully, it'll uh, take away the vulnerability scan. So, uh, Kali has been rebooted. I'm going back into uh, the web browser, but in this case, it'll be in the terminal. And we're going to just make sure we start Nessus uh, because Nessus is installed on Kali Linux. So, Let's make sure that the server is running. At this point, you can see the status is not running. Uh, so we're going to start the Nessus. And you see now it's actively running after we run a status. We're going to go to the address bar, https colon slash slash the IP address 10.0.3.13 with the port number of 8834. And this is the, the port of the Nessus. Go ahead and log in with your admin. Uh, in this case, I had to check the Java version um, and then going to start the scan again. And the vulnerability is going to be pulled uh, as a scanning. I can tell you right now that the scan here is going to still show because the file is still present. Uh, as you can see here, under the user lib jvm the file java dash 1.11 still shows so in this case we need to remove the java uh there are few things we can do is sudo app 
dash git auto remove uh, open JDK and we're going to choose the 11 uh, dash 11 because we already have the open 22 open JDK 22 so we're going to remove the 11 or try to rem auto remove it And we're going to say yes to the auto remove of uh, OpenJDK 11. It's going to go and remove it. Uh, so it says that it has been removed, but when we did a LS to look at it, it still show present. So there's a few other things that we could do to get Java 11 removed. Uh, I'm wanting to make sure that the links are uh, going to not be a problem. So I did a pseudo app dash git and we're going to purge to make sure we're removing anything uh, which is the open jdk dash 11. Uh, I tried with star which is everything but it's unable to uh, remove everything so I did dash 11 uh, jre uh, in this case jre is not installed because we already installed 22, uh, Java 22 on there. This is where I was trying to create a sim link on the default Java. So it knows how to redirect which configuration it needs for any application that needs Java. As you can see, this Java is pointing a link to uh, Java 1.11. So I was going to create uh, a link with 1.22. Uh, this didn't work because I missed the operator or an option to the uh, link, the LN. So I'm going back over here and I'm going to add a dash S to create a symbolic link. Uh, in this case, it's asked for permission. So I did a sudo command and it created a link on the Java to the default.
Uh, in this case, I'm going to do ls. I'm going to remove the file manually uh, because the auto removal didn't work. So I rm to remove the Java dash one. Uh, it needs privilege escalation. So I did a sudo and it removed the Java dot 11. As you can see, I also try to remove the Java dash dash 11 open JDK. Uh, it says uh, it's a directory. Uh, sudo command did not work because there's file inside that directory. So I did remove again, but it's supposed to be rm dash r where you will see shortly here. Where I did our sudo rm and it's going to be the dash R. I did first remove directory, remove dir, did not work because uh, to move, remove a directory with file inside, you have to use the RM dash R. This is a wrong command, so that command did not work. And then I uh, did a sudo rm r to remove it and did a update to the system uh, using sudo app update and sudo app uh, upgrade with y to so I don't have to hit yes to it. In this case, um, all the other uh, VM servers and uh, machines don't need to be up and running. And I want to minimize my uh, RAM usage. So I'm shutting down all the devices that didn't have uh, any vulnerabilities. Uh, in the Windows server here, it's shut down dash capital P. And I'm just shutting down all the other systems using the command shut down now. As you can see here, my RAM uses have went down from 50 to 30. And uh, hopefully when I uh, move all the file, so now it has finished updating. Uh, all these other fails are something else. So go back to my scan and we're gonna run the scan again. Uh, hit the play and it's gonna run the vulnerability scan and it should not populate in there no more since we removed the file that's associated with the vulnerability.
And as you see, the vulnerability is not showing up no more. Uh, I'm searching through the other vulnerabilities or just mostly info. If you go to history, this is the current. Uh, the second one here was the previous one. If you click on it, you can see the vulnerability showed in there on the open JDK, but that's from a previous scan and not the current. If we go to the current one, uh, there won't be a tab for remediation. So now you can see that the scan is no, uh, the scan is not showing that vulnerability. Uh, we did a Java version to check, make sure we're still in the same version. And the scan is already completed. So in this case, we are done with the vulnerability and we remediate the vulnerability. And that completes this lab.